Hello and welcome to a new video about electromagnetic electrohydraulic. Last time we talked about the combinations of those electrical circuit diagram and the circuit diagram, the schematic of the pneumatic. Today we want to start small, let's say. Today we want to control a single acting cylinder. For a single acting cylinder we need a 3-2 way valve and I have decided we are using a 3-2 way valve, which will automatically return to its there's a lock rest position, you know, the cylinder will move inwards by default. And if we are controlling the solenoid valve, yeah, if we are controlling this coil here, MB1, then it will shift and the cylinder will travel outwards. The cylinder is even equipped with two limit switches, BG1 and BG2. However, I think we don't use them. I just want to press a button, then the cylinder shall travel out. If I release the button, the cylinder shall travel in. Okay. So there might be the possibility to do this directly. Yeah. But this is already the pneumatic schematic. Yeah. So this is the this is complete. Yeah. So pneumatic schematic, more, more, more is not there. Yeah? And now the real, this is just the power part, right? The real control is in the control part, which is electrical. What we need, yeah? we need some sort of switch. S1, I will call it. And if we control it directly, we're directly controlling this. And we have to name it the same way, NB1. This is connection A1 and A2. This is already it. Yeah. So this might be an electrical control scheme. If I press the button, this will have power, this will switch, will travel. Okay. So this is direct control. If we're not using direct control, we're using non-direct control, uh, we have some benefits. Yeah. I will show you how this is working. Okay. So, for instance, here this is working pretty much the same. I have the switch. If I if I press this switch, there's S1. I want something to happen. However, I'm not switching directly. The valve. Yeah. Maybe also here there might be drawn this valve here. Yeah, and there is even might be written which valve. Yeah? Then it's totally clear where it belongs to. Well, this would be nice. So we're not switching the valve directly now, like here. We're switching a relay. So we're switching a K, K1. Yeah? And this relay might have some contacts. Yeah? They have a certain numbering, yeah. So there is a one. Then we talked about this. We talked about this. There is two and there is three. Yeah. We will operate this. All right. We will operate this, and those things they are used here. Yeah? There's two. And there's three. There's two. They are used here, and these will switch MB1. There's also A1, there's also A2. Yeah. There also is this sign of the valve. QM1 is switched. Yeah. So, and this here is operated. This is from K1. Okay.
This is indirect approach. What is the benefit? I've already written there one possible reason. You see, now if, for instance, this coil here is not working with 24 volts, I can produce here, but it's working with 20, 30, 230 volts. DC, I've written DC, this must be of course AC. AC, alternating current. And there is the neutral. So if I want to operate a 230 volt AC, I can use it and make it like this. Because usually control voltages inside an electrical cabinet and so on, 24 volt is very usual, you know. You don't need to cover anything or anything. It's a small voltage. It is safe. Yeah? And if the power to somewhere you need more, then you should use this indirect approach. Also, in case of very complicated structures here, yeah, it is always a good idea to keep these complicated structures and logic apart from the part which is switching the power. Yeah, because then it's clear which relay, or even in that case, even might be a contactor, yeah, a big relay, so a, a Schütz in German, if this is necessary, yeah, then you have to do it like that indirect approach. Okay? So, how is it working? I think it's obvious. If we press the button, this will switch. Chuck, chuck, go. Yeah? So, like I said, if we have different voltages level for our solenoid valves, then we have to use this. And here it is also easily possible, for instance, now, in control systems, there is often the case that we have a local control. Yeah? We are standing in front of this machinery yeah? and we can switch. And then there is, might be the case that this local machinery can be also controlled from somewhere else, from some control system, which is located, I don't know, somewhere else. Yeah? And then here it would be easy to make a second line here. Yeah. And a second contact, like that, which is controlled from a K, I don't know, 100. Yeah. So this comes now from a control system. So, and also the control system, I can make it locally. Yeah. So the local button is working. Okay. Or the control system might also switch yeah, from somewhere else. So remote control can be done easily uh, with such approach. This is the usual approach, uh, indirect. There's more advantage. It's more effort. Yeah? So if you have easy applications, all right, this one is cheaper. But for more complex things, use indirect control. Yeah? Working better is more maintainable. Control of a single acting cylinder. This is how you can do it. Pneumatic schematic, electrical wiring, yeah, wiring plan, uh, circuit diagram, one version, second version. Okay. Next time, we want to, to use an impulse valve and store the last command. Let's see how this is working. Yeah? So we want to control the cylinder in a certain way that some things are done automatically. Right now we press the button, it moves. If we release the button, it moves back. Next time it should do a little bit more automated system. Okay. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.